I'm going to start recording. We could always go to the Zoom if you... Uh, we could, um, but I'm recording, so we have it. Uh, so as long as I figure out where the file goes on my computer, I'll probably be able to figure it out. If I can figure it out, I'll put it on the uh, YouTube app. Um, okay, on the YouTube. Okay, so um, number two, right? You said 6.2.3. Wait, wait, no, you said 6.2.3, number one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. So it says if a player A pays player B $1 when the outcome of one roll of a die is 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, then in order to make this a fair game, what should player B pay player A when the outcome is a 6? Okay, so the goal to make it a fair game. So what what is the definition of a fair game? Uh, if I remember correctly, the expected mean is should be equal to zero expected value yeah the the mean oh. equals expected value which is zero yeah okay 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 so x the random variable x here is the amount of money let's say um player a pays player b right so mm -hmm. uh we want this value to be on average zero then it's a fair game right the idea is that in the long run, the both players would end up even. And so the net gain of either player would average out to be zero. That would be a fair game, right? If if the average for any one player in this game would be positive, that would mean that player would have an advantage over the other one, and it would be unfair for the other player. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, okay, so uh, a plays B pays B one dollar when the outcome of one roll of a die is one two three four five right so the expected value of random variable x e of x is equal to the sum of all possible values of x of x times f of x so what that means is it's one times one sixth is one sixth chance of rolling a one plus one uh, plus uh, plus two uh, times one sixth uh, because um, Wait, 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 it's a plus one, it's still plus one. Um, so if he rolls a one, then he pays B one dollar, right? So there's a one six chance of that. If he rolls a two, uh, there's, let me, let me, let me write this easier. E of X is equal to, there's a five, six chance that he rolls a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And so, in any of those scenarios, A, play, A pays B one dollar. So there's a five six chance that he rolls a one two three four or five, and in each of those instances, he would give player B a dollar. So five six times one, plus there's a one six chance that he rolls a six, and in that eventuality, um, player B would pay player so. Now let, let's say that X is the amount, X is the amount um, that, uh, that B pays A, right? If, if um, you roll a six, right? If a six is rolled, okay? So that means that if B is paying A a certain amount, that in a sense you could think of it as A paying B negative X. Does that make sense, the negative of it? Um, if whenever one person gives another person X dollars, you could think of it as that person losing X dollars. Does that make sense as a matter of perspective? Yeah, it makes sense now. Yeah, I was not understanding the negative, right. but I get it, yeah. Right. So E X is in the perspective of player A, um, how much player A is giving player B. So when a one, two, three, four, or five is rolled, A gives B a dollar. So that's what the one is there in the first product, because A is giving B a dollar. When a six is rolled, B is giving A a dollar. So the action of B giving A a dollar would in a sense be A giving B negative a dollar, the opposite. So if if a six is rolled, 
And instead of saying B gives A X dollars, you could say A gives B negative X dollars. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, it's the opposite perspective. So this is the expected value of X, where this little X is the amount B pay, pays A if a six is rolled. So we want to see the expected value of X equal to zero, making it a fair game. And then you just solve for X, and the value of X that satisfies that equation is the amount that they're asking for. And so you get X over six is equal to five six. And so then that means that X is five. That makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so I'm going to try to do these solutions quickly. That way I can get a lot done. Okay, so Kishan, you were the you were in the room first. Um, yep, x equals five, Cesar. When um, to make this a fair game, D did that make sense, Cesar? To you also? Okay, good. Okay, so Kishan, uh, is Kishan still here? I'm not looking at the. No, I can't you. see. Uh, Okay, hi. Uh, so what's what's your question? So can I, can I go over to homework seven? Sure. Okay, so homework seven, right? Okay, so which one? One or two? Which part? Like, like, like both. Okay, uh, choose choose a choose a, a part though. Which one do you want to do? A, B, C, or D from one or two? Um, or E. So can I, can we do one for A and A to C? Let's uh, okay. Let let me try to help you in the way I think can help us. So let's see one a. Let's look at one a. So let x be a standard normal random variable. Find the probability that x will take on a value that is a less than 1.5. Okay. So what we want is the probability that x is less than x is less than 1.5. And so x is standard normal random variable. Okay. So we had this um. We had this table right, uh, where we we found values. And the values of the table give you values um, for probabilities that look like this. So if you have probabilities of zero less than z, less than little z, right? That's what the table tells you, right? So for values of little z, you can find this probability, where z is a standard normal random variable. So the z in that table, do you remember that table, Kisha? Kisha? I have it open. I I'm a computer. Okay, good. Okay. So. Okay, good. So the probability that x is less than 0.5 is equal to the probability that x is less than zero, plus the probability that zero is less than x less than 1.5. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, good. What is the probability that x is less than zero? Do you know for standard normal x? Um. Is it? We are look at the uh, table. No, you don't need the table for this. So if you have a standard normal random variable, right? Oh, the the yeah. graph looks like this, and we're in the middle is when mu, but the mu the mean is zero because you have a standard normal random variable. So there is symmetry about this vertical line about the mean, which means half of the area is to the left of that line and half is to the right, which means that the probability that your random variable is less than zero is one half. And the probability that x that the random standard random standard normal random variable is greater than zero is also one half. Does that make sense? There's a half of a chance it's less than the mean, a half a chance is greater than the mean equals zero. Okay. Make sense? So the word standard, the standard is telling you that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So because it's a standard normal random variable, that means the probability x is less than zero is one half. Okay. Uh, so then you add that to that probability. So can you tell me from the table what that probability is? So 1.5. That yeah, you have to look. So in the table, right? You have to look it up. But that's not the the probability, right? So what do you know how to find the probability from the table? Or you need help with that. Um. So I'm like, um, is it? Well, I found it. Is um. Okay, is it? 
Let me check. Okay, so 1.5. Uh, what, what number did you say? 0 0.4332 because... No, 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 not 332, three, right? So you're looking for... Oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm look 0 0.4332, you're correct. Yeah, yeah. yep, 0 0.4332, absolutely. Good, okay, so, so yeah. good. 0 0.4332. So what's the answer? Is zero zero point nine three two? Correct. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, okay. So. So I have a yeah. question. Um. So you put like how come you put like zero is um okay because it's it's greater than zero like that's why you put zero or so I, you mean why is there a number zero there? Or are you talking about the equal? Why why there's no less than or equal to? No, I'm too, so so why is there zero like? Oh. Because the yeah. that we have a standard normal random variable, meaning that the mean is zero for a standard normal random variable. And see okay. the graph I drew above. See the graph. Yeah. Right? For, for this particular type of random variable where the mean is zero, that means the probability that your random variable is less than the mean is one half. And the probability it's greater than the mean is one half, right? There's that symmetry, which is oh, why I'm able to know that the probability x less than zero is one half. Oh, I get it. That makes sense? And so now that that happens, the table gives you the values from zero to any positive amount, which means you can now use the table to get the missing piece. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it sound, looks, sounds like you get it. Now, so for, for 2, let's do A. So for 2A, it says X is a standard normal random variable. Find little z if the probability, if the probability that X will take on a value less than little z is that. Okay, so everyone else here probably also might have trouble with these problems. So, so listen to this. Okay, so we want to find the probability that X will take on a value less than little z is equal to that that probability is equal to 0 0.9842 okay so so let's say uh so the probability that x is less than little z since it's a amount greater this is a standard normal random variable since the amount is l more than a half we know that little z has to be greater than a half. So this is going to be equal to the probability that x is less than 0 plus the probability that 0 is less than x less than little z. Okay? And so now this first probability here is 1 half. So this thing is equal to 1 half plus the probability that 0 is less than x less than little z. Okay? Now, they tell you that this probability is equal to 0 0.9842. So what you have is that 0 0.9842 is equal to 1 half plus that probability. So 0.9842 is equal to 1 half, which is 0 0.5, plus the probability that 0 is less than x less than little z. And now you solve for the back probability as if it were a, like a normal variable. So the probability that 0 is less than x less than little z, if you subtract 1 half on both sides, you get that that's equal to 0 0.4842. And so, Kashal, what I want you to do is I want you to look in the table. I mean, where, find a cell in that table, um, in that, a, a cell, right, a rectangle in that, in that table that gives you a probability of 0.4842, and then tell me the value of little z from that. Okay. So it works backwards.
So what is the number like? Nine eight four two. Point four eight four two. Oh. But you subtract a half, right? Do you see that step? Uh, oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, 0.9842 might equal, equals 0.5 plus that probability. So you subtract 0.5 on both sides. So you get that probability is equal to 0.4842. So you're looking for 0.4842 in the table and then working backwards and telling me the value of little z that would give you that probability. Are you having trouble finding it? Um, yeah. Okay, so in the Excel sheet, right, do you see how the yeah. numbers are, are sometimes getting bigger or smaller depending on the direction you're going? Yeah. yeah. So I want, you to, I want you to follow the progression either up or down until you see an area close to the 0. .4842, right? So mm -hmm. if you're looking going in a direction, numbers going down, and you're going further away, you go in the opposite direction, right? Mm -hmm. So, so use that, and and you should get near it, and then it'll just be near where you're looking. Okay, so okay, so for instance, look for point four eight, right? Look for point four eight, and then you're near yeah. it. So new is um zero point zero right so do you see a cell on, on it where this is point four eight? Do you see cells that have point four eight on it? Yeah. Right? Okay, so so now just okay, look at the look at the first entries in the rows, right? Look for a row where you see point four eight at the beginning of it. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, now do you see as you go to the right the numbers get bigger? Yeah. Right? So now keep going to the right and then and then see if you see a point four eight four two. See for it to one for it to six. Um, right, just keep looking. Yeah, for it three, for it three, four. Um, right, keep going. Zero point four eight four. Point zero point four eight four two. You see it? Point. Yeah, zero point four eight two. Uh, what is the number? Um, what's the number I told you to look for? Just tell me that. Um, okay, so. What is the number I told you to look at? Uh, 0.4842. Good, so you see it, you see it, right? Yeah, okay, so what is the value of... Good, so what is the value of little z corresponding to that number in the table? Um, so, so I, I see 0, I see both 8 and 0 0.481. No, you said you see, you see this cell that says 0.4842, right? 
Yeah, I see zero point four eight four. Yeah, I see two. No, zero point four eight four two, right? Yeah. Okay, so now tell me the value of little z corresponding to that table, right? The row and column is tables for the row and column cells. No. Right? I see zero point four zero point zero four. What? No. It, it, it's what? What is the row it's in? What is the label for the row it's in? So the row is two point one. Good. And what's the column it's in? Um, it's zero point zero four. No, that's not the column it's in. Look up, oh. look up for the column, right? So, okay, so column is 0, 0.0. Okay, it's, okay. Um. Right, so just, just go up the column. Are you, are you, do you have trouble seeing what column it's in, or no? Okay, um, is it 0 0.016, I see. The, the cell, the cell, you can, don't change the file, right? But can you click on the cell that you're looking at? Maybe click on it so it's highlighted. Yeah. Okay, now that you have the cell highlighted, 0.4842, right? 0 0.4842. You see the row is 2.1. So what column is in it? F and G. Right, if you're looking at Microsoft Excel, they'll probably have the column highlighted for you, right? So you can see the number next to it, underneath it. Yeah, I see, I see it, zero, it's 0.05, it's highlighted. That's it, good. Okay, it's 0 0.05 there, right? So what is the value of little z corresponding to it? It's 0 0.05. Is it 2.1 or? Yeah, but you add the two numbers, right? You add 2.1 and 0 0.05, right? Yeah. So what do you get? What's Z then? What's little Z then? It's 2.15. Very good. So that's the answer. Okay. Okay, now it makes. You get it? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, the other questions are just the, the same procedure. So if you get this oh. procedure, all you have to do is repeat this pretty much. There is little differences, but it's similar, right? Uh, so I think I need to, to talk about other problems. Uh, oh. Okay, can I erase this on the screen now? Or are you good? Um, okay, let me... Yeah, I could erase. I mean, you can always take a picture of the screen, right, when I'm done? Yeah, I, I took a screenshot. Okay, awesome. Good. Okay, so uh, next is, I want to try to get to everybody. So, uh, okay. Okay, so, uh, Alif, I answered a question. Kashan, I asked, asked a question. So, Cesar, I think, was here also earlier. So, Cesar, do you have a question? Uh, I think Haram Ritdeep was here before me, though. It's okay, bro. You can go ahead. You can go first. Oh, I, it doesn't matter to me who goes first. Uh, so you, either of you can go first. Whoever wants to go first. You want to flip a coin? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mind. Uh, okay, Howard D, you go first. Howard okay, D, uh, goes first. Professor, uh, I, I just wanted to uh, the, the practice question uh, the, for, for the test, second test, uh, number five. Okay. I think it's a quick one, and I'm just little stuck in the middle. I, I don't know. It's, it's all that. It seemed too simple. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm uploading it. Give me a second. And then, uh, there we go. Very good. Okay, number five, you said? Yes, sir, number five. Okay, so suppose the point x, comma, y is selected at random from inside the circle with radius 3 and center at the origin. Find the joint P, F, and X, and Y. Okay, so um, I'm just going to write on the screen. So I'm going to write over this test. 
Uh, so we have a circle centered at the origin, and there's the origin, and the radius is 3. So the, the PDF, the joint PDF, this is the probability that x and y each take on particular values. This is just equal to 1 over the area of that circle, which is pi r squared, which is pi times 3 squared. It's 1 over 9 pi. Oh, that's it, Professor? That's it. <laughs> okay, I, I did that. Okay, thank you. Do you have another question? Yeah, no, that's it. Thank you. I mean, some, um, that's uh, the, the only question you have? Yeah, that was okay. the only question I had. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, if a question's really fast, I'm fine with answering one. Well, okay, Cesar, what's your question? Uh, from homework nine. It's uh, 6.6, .6, number two. 6.6, .6, number two. Let x be a continuous random variable with probability density function given by that. Let g of x equals 3x minus 2. Use theorem 6.5 and 6.6 .6 to find the variance of x and the variance of g of x. So I wrote, that uh, was nice, so I wrote down theorem 6.5 and 6.6 there. So there's theorem 6.5 and, and theorem 6.6. .6. So we're going to find the variance of x and the variance of g of x. So the variance of x is equal to e of x squared minus e squared of x. So you have to do is calculate e of x squared, calculate e of x, and then plug them in and find variance of x, right? So the question boils down to how do you find those values? So let's find e of x first because it's easier to find e x. So ex is equal to the integral of f of x times x dx from negative infinity to infinity. Now, it's easier than that because f is only non-zero for x values between negative 1 and 1. So instead of integrating over the entire real line, you can integrate from negative 1 to 1. So you're integrating from negative 1 to 1 of f of x, which is 3 fourths, times 1 minus x squared dx. Oh, and then there's also an x. See the x there? So there's an x here, too. Does that make sense so far? Yes. All right, good. So this is now equal to, so you have 3 fourths. And now we want to integrate. So we find an antiderivative of, of x times 1 minus x squared. x times 1 minus x squared is x minus x cubed. So an antiderivative of that would be 1 half x squared minus 1 fourth x to the fourth. And so you evaluate that from negative 1 to 1. And so this is equal to then 3 fourths times, and then when you plug in 1, you get 1 half minus 1 fourth, which is 1 fourth. And then you subtract, and when you plug in negative 1, you get 1 half minus 1 fourth which is one-fourth again. And so you get zero. So you get zero. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So e of x is 0. So let's remember that. So e of x is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to erase this. Okay, so e of x is 0. Now, if you calculate e of x squared, it's just equal to the in e of x squared. It's equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1. Instead of, right, ne instead of negative infinity, you restricted negative 1 to 1 of f of x times x squared dx. And so now this is equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f, which is 3 fourths times 1 minus x squared times x squared dx. And so this is equal to 3 fourths times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of x squared times that, which is x squared minus x to the fourth dx. 
And so this is equal to 3 fourths times an antiderivative of the integrand evaluated from negative 1 to 1. So that's x cubed over 3 minus x to the fifth over 5. And you evaluate it from negative 1 to 1. And so this is equal to 3 fourths times, now when you plug in 1, you get 1 third minus 1 fifth, which is 2 fifteenths. Okay, when you plug in 1 third minus 1 fifth is 5 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths, which is 2 fifteenths. Then you subtract from that. When you plug in negative 1, you get negative 1 third minus negative 1 fifth. You get negative 1 third plus 1 fifth. That's 1 fifth minus 1 third. That's 3, that's, that's 3 fifteenths minus, wait, so it's a negative 1 third plus 1 fifth, 1 fifth minus 1 third, 3 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths, it's negative 2 fifteenths, and so it's plus another 2 fifteenths. Anyway, you calculate that, and you get 4 fifteenths times 3 fourths, so the fourths cancel, so you get um, 3 fifteenths, which is 1 fifth. So e of x squared is 1 fifth. Do you get the idea of the calculation? Yeah. You just do e of x squared, which is the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x, x squared, dx, and then you calculate a definite integral, right? And you get 1 fifth. Great. So is this really all we have to do for this question? Just find what e of x and e of x squared are? Yeah, and then but then you have to plug them in correctly, right? So it's not just the difference. It's e of x squared minus e of x squared. So you have to do 1 fifth minus 0 squared, which is 1 fifth, right? That makes sense? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that's the variance of x, and then it says to find the variance of g of x. So g of x is 3x minus 2. So, um, so g of x would then be, uh, so then, okay, I'm going to erase this. Okay, so whenever I'm done, I'm going to give a moment, maybe a short moment, and then erase stuff. So make sure that if you want to take a picture, take it, or just tell me to, to stop and then Tell me not to, to raise it. Okay, so then um, if you, so now it says to find the variance of x and the variance of g of x. Okay, so the variant, so now we want to find the variance of g of x. Variance of g of x is what I wrote there. So the variance of g of x is equal to, um, right, it's equal to e of the variable, which is now g of x squared minus e squared of g of x. That makes sense so far? Yes. All right, so now g of x squared, g of x is 3x minus 2. So this is equal to e of 3x minus 2 squared. So 3x minus 2 squared is 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. And then this is minus e squared of g of x. This is minus e squared of g of x, which is 3x minus 2. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Oh, let me, I'm going to backtrack for a second. Let's use theorem 6.6 .6 to make this easier. We're finding the variance of g of x. I'm just going to shorten this problem. So that, that's what would happen if we didn't use 6.6. .6. Variance of g of x is the variance of uh, g, x, g of x, which is 3x minus 2. So we want to find the variance of gx minus 2. So by theorem 6.6, .6, it says the variance of ax plus b is a squared variance of x. Here, b is negative 2. So this is equal to a squared. a here is 3. This is equal to 3 squared times the variance of x. That makes sense? Yes. Okay, so then 3 squared is 9, and then the variance of x we already found was 1 fifth. So it's 9 times 1 fifth, which is 9 fifths, and that's the answer. See how quick that is? Yeah, thank you. And that makes sense? Uh, yes, it does, actually. Okay, good. You're just computing the variance of x, and then you're using the variance of x for the next question by plugging it in as 1 fifth. Very good. Okay. Uh, okay. Next is, uh, did I answer one question from everyone now? Alif, I did, Cesar. Okay. So, Alif, we're back to you. What's your next question? Uh, I have a question on homework 11.
Okay, which uh, which problem? Uh, part three, uh, for seven to point seven, and I think uh, just to like uh, do A and uh, one of uh, I think C. Okay, so part A says find the value of the constant C. So suppose x and y are continuous random variables with joint probability density function given by that function. Find the value. Find find the value of the constant C. Okay, so what we know about a PDF, right, is that we should get the number one if we integrate over the entire space. So our space is zero less than or equal to y, less than or equal to x squared, less than or equal to y. Okay, so what is this space? We're in x, y plane. We want the space of all points x and y such that zero is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to x squared, less than or equal to y. So when is x squared less than or equal to 1? That's probably the easier thing to think about. So let's think about that. When is x squared less than or equal to 1? So if you look at the graph of y equals x squared, it looks like this. This is y equals x squared. And so when you plug in x value, you get a value on the graph, right? So, so x squared is less than or equal to 1. Well, if x is 1, x squared is 1. If x is less than 1, x squared is less than 1, right? So, so if this was 1 here on the x-axis, then we would know that we would stop at this point. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so on the graph, you could look at all the points of, on the parabola there, of y equals x squared, up to including the po that point when x equals 1, but then stopping, none of the points after it. Now, it also says y less or equal to x squared. So if y is less or equal to x squared, that means it's all the points below the graph also, either on the graph or below it. Does that make sense? Uh, so all these mean, points, um, so all these, all this section I'm, I'm, I'm coloring it in the light green, that's all the points. This, these are all continuing out. These are, and on the graph also, these are all the points whose y value is either on the graph or below it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you're looking at an x value, where x, an x value on the parabola, if you're looking at y equals x squared, then that would be a point on the graph of y equals x squared, right? Mm -hmm. But if you had y less or equal to x squared, you know what that would be saying is you'd be looking at a point x comma y, where the height y was either at the graph or below it. Oh, okay, yeah, I think I'm getting that, yeah. If you fix any value of x, let's say 1, right? If x was 1, you'd be saying y was less than or equal to 1 squared, or y less than or equal to 1, right? So if you fix the value of x, you're taking all the points with y value at most that x value squared, which is the, which is the height of the curve y equals x squared for that fixed value of x. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So that, that green region is the region where zero, all the points x comma y, such as zero is less or equal to y, less or equal to x squared, less or equal to one. And so that's the region in which the PDF f of x comma y is non-zero. It's zero everywhere else. So you want to integrate over that green region of that f. And if you do that, what you should do is you should get one. So we're going to take the double integral over that teal region, green region, of this function f of x comma y. And so this is going to be, uh, so we have with respect to x and with respect to y. So um, let's integrate with respect to y first and then with respect to x. So if you integrate with respect to y first, you're looking at, at, um, at these kind of rectangles where it's going from negative infinity to um, x squared because x squared is the y value at the top of the, on the curve, right? On the top of the rectangle. And then the x values are going from negative infinity to one, because it's going up to x equals one. You see that? Yeah. Okay, so now you just find this integral and you have to set equal to one, because that's the total. If you add up all the probabilities, you're supposed to get equals to one. And so now your expression, you have an expression of c, and, you sh and then you, you can calculate it. So this is the integral from negative infinity to 1 on the outside integral. In, in, inner integral is from negative infinity to x squared. 
of f of x comma y, which is c times x plus y, uh, dy dx equals one. And so this is just a matter of calculating this integral, double integral, setting equal to one. The double integral is going to be expression of c, that's going to equal one, and you're going to solve algebraically for c. So, um, okay, so this c is a constant, so you can pull it out of both integrals, and you can divide by c. So you get one over c is equal to whatever this integral is. Okay, so if you fix at x is a constant in the inner inner integral, so you're integrating from negative infinity to x squared of x plus y dy. Okay, and so x is a constant. So the the antiderivative is, is x y plus y squared over two. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so th this is from calculus, so you're integrating, and this is now you're evaluating from negative infinity to little x. Um, these are values of y, and so x is a constant, so you can set that as a limit of integration. Okay, so now, uh, so now you, you plug in x, and then you plug in um, y is negative Oh, oh, here, you see how it says y greater equal to zero? Yeah. You see four y greater equal to zero, so I forgot that. Okay, so this it's not the teal region. It's it's it stops the x axis. So it's it's the it's the teal so I'm gonna use another color. Uh, I'm gonna use this uh, this color. See this new color? Looking at all the points that's that's bounded by the x axis up to y equals x squared. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, so, so now our limits of integration. You see that? So now that the lower limit is not going to be negative infinity for y. It's going to be zero here. Because y is going from zero to x squared. The height of the points, the points, the lowest height of a point is on the x-axis, which is y is zero. And the highest height is y equals x squared. So we're integrating from zero to x squared. Okay, okay. so this is a uh, calculus. Okay, so we're going from zero to, um, and this is uh, x squared. Okay. And so you plug in x squared for y, and then you subtract plugging in y equals zero. When you plug in y equals zero, you get zero. So it's just the, the value of this when y is x squared. So you get x cubed plus plugging in x squared, x to the fourth over two. So that's the inner integral, x cubed plus x to the fourth over two. Okay? So now you plug that into the outer integral, which is the outer integral is the integral from negative infinity to one. And you plug in x cubed plus x to the fourth over two, and then dx. So you find antiderivative, which is x to the fourth over four, and then plus x to the fourth over two, you, an integer is x to the fifth over 10. And now you evaluate this from negative infinity to one. And so if you plug in one, you get one fourth plus one tenth. And so one fourth plus one tenth is 10 fortieths plus four fortieths, which is 14 fortieths. And then you, and then you subtract, um, and so when x is, um, oh, okay, so since it's, uh, again, um, since it's, it's zero less or equal to y, less or equal to, um, oh, less or equal to x squared. x squared is always greater than or equal to zero. Oh, but then it says x squared less or equal to one. So the lower limit, I have to modify this again. So this is going to be from, it's from negative one. It's from negative one to one. Okay, so we're going here to here. That's the region. And now we're going from negative. Can you go from negative why one is it to negative one again? Because I don't get that. Okay, so, so, uh, so if you're going from negative one to one, um, 
we're going to zero less or equal to y, less or equal to x squared, less or equal to one. So in order for x squared to be less or equal to one, that means that negative one is less or equal to x, less or equal to y. Look at the gate open, there's a fucking. That makes sense? Yeah, it makes so, sense. So if you take the square root of both sides, you could do that. X squared less or equal to 1. If you take the square root of both sides, the square root of X squared is the absolute value of X. And so that's less than or equal to the square root of 1, which is 1. So if you, take the, if you take the square root of A squared, that's the absolute value of A. So the square root of X squared is the absolute value of X. So if you have X squared less or equal to 1, if you take the square root of both sides, you get the absolute value of X is less or equal to 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so f about x is less than equal to 1, which means x is between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. Next, do you get it now? Kind of, yeah. And um, That's it, yeah. So now we're going from negative 1 to 1. So uh, here, this is just a negative 1. It's negative 1 to 1, 0 to x squared. Okay, so this is calculus. So now you calculate it. Um, and so now it's minus, now if you plug in negative, this is negative one now, and so now if you plug in a negative one, you have one fourth, you actually have the same value. So you have 14 over 40 minus, wait, no, no, you don't. If you plug in negative one, you get, this is minus one fourth, but now it's a minus because it's x to the fifth, so it's minus one tenth. So it's 1440, it's minus the parentheses 1 fourth minus 1 tenth. So this is equal to 14 over 40 um, minus, so it's, it's 10 fortieths minus 4 fortieths, which is 6 fortieths. And so this is equal to 8 fortieths. And so 8 fortieths is 1 fifth. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, do you need to take a picture of this weird stuff I wrote over here? Um, um, I have so, the picture, yeah. Okay, so, so this double integral is 1 fifth, and so it's equal to 1 over C, so C is 5. So this, this is equal to 1 over C, and so that means that C is 5. Right, this double integral is what we calculated, and it's 1 over 5. So we got that this double integral is equal to 1 over C. Because I, 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 it, it's, I divide both sides by C, so it's a double integral without the C. The double integral without the C is, is that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, so then C, okay, so, so I'm going to erase this for a second. I just want to, I'm going to write something down. Just, this is the final thing, right? So you have y equals x squared. And so the region we want, we care about is from x equals negative 1 to x equals 1, and it's below the graph but above the x-axis. So the region we care about is this region bounded by this vertical line, this vertical line, the x-axis, and the curve of y equals x squared. So it's this whole region in between. And so in calculus, when you integrate this region, you think of a, an approximating rectangle, like you would think of this vertical rectangle here. And so that's the picture that helps you find the integral to represent how to integrate over that region. But we're integrating over the function f here. So what we want is the double integral of f of x comma y. Um, and now because the, the, the rectangle is vertical, the first one is dy. And so the dy is going from the bottom of the rectangle, which is when y is zero, to the top of the rectangle when y is x squared, because that's the graph y equals x squared. So it's going from zero to x squared. Then you go from left to right. So you imagine that vertical rectangle sweeping from left to right, it would cover the entire green region. And so that's with respect to x. Moving left, right is x, the dx, and you're going from negative 1 to 1. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so now what we did was f is c times x plus y in that region. And so we just took the c out and calculated the double integral without the c. And so we got this. So then we, and then we calculate it. So does that make more sense? 
Yes, it makes sense, yeah. Okay, so this is technically equal to one. And so now we, we, evaluate, we, found the, we divide both sides by C and then calculate them onto one C. Okay, so now, uh, so now you said part A and part uh, C, right? Yeah, in part C, I saw the solution, right? And I didn't understand how it went because you had the integral going from negative one to negative y um, square root. And I didn't understand that where that interval came from. Okay, so let's let's do it. So C equals five, right, was the value I got. So the value of the constant C is five. The mar is for the marginal probability density function of y. Okay, so... Um, okay, bye, Caesar. Okay, so so now, <laughs> so the marginal probability density function is f sub y of y, and this is equal to the integral of f of x comma y dx from negative infinity to infinity. Now, so x is range, so it's over all values of x, but but we don't have to worry about all values of x, right? We only values we care about. Um, from the region we were thinking of is the values of x from, so we want values of, of um, uh, probability of y. So let me draw the region again. So we have, uh, so we have this region here. We have the graph of y equals x squared. We have x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. And then we have, uh, here's x going from negative 1 to 1, this here, and this here, right? And so that's the region, right, that we care about here. So um, the marginal probability density function y. So what's the probability that y is equal to a particular value? Okay, so when you look at a particular value of y, let's say this value of y, you would think of all of the probabilities. You would add up infinitesimally all the, the probabilities of little f for that fixed value of y. Uh, and so we're integrating with respect to x. Now, the only parts that matter are the parts that intersect with that teal region. And so this is going to be the integral from negative 1 to um, okay, so if y is equal to a fixed value, um, oh, let me look at the negative one. Okay, so if I look at the right side first, we're going from y equals x squared. Oh, okay, so if y is x squared on the graph, that means the value of x that would give you that value is x is equal to the plus or minus the square root of y, right? So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y. Those are the x values in which that graph crosses that horizontal line. So this point and this point, those two points, okay? And so what we want to do is we want to integrate from negative 1 to that value of x, which is negative the square root of y of f dx plus the integral from the square root of y to 1 of f dx. Does that make sense? Uh, I'm sorry. How did you get uh, the negative y and uh, y square root again? Like why is it y why is y equals to x squared like? Okay, so um, so let's look at the picture, right? So the so what we want is the marginal probability density function of y. That's f sub y of y. That's the what it's asking. What is the probability that y takes on any particular value, right? Mm -hmm. And so y could take on if you look at a one fixed value of y. There's all the infinitely many of corresponding values of x that still have that value of y, right? Like if you look at y equals one, you have one comma one, two comma one, three comma one, right? 
Okay. Um, so all the points in that horizontal line would be points where the y value is the same and it's the y value you're thinking of. So you want to add up all the probabilities of that function. We want to add up all the probabilities um, over all over all points in that line. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we're using an integral because we have a and it's not a finite or a discrete number of points. We have an entire line's worth of points for a fixed value of y. And so we're integrating over x. And so we're sweeping across that line. But f is zero everywhere except in that green region that I drew in. Which means that instead of integrating over the entire real line for a fixed value of y, we want to only look at those two subregions where the line intersects with that teal region. Does that make sense? Oh, so that's why we chose x squared, because that's where. Well, so now, so now separate. So the goal is to see what are the where are the intervals on that line that intersect with the teal region. But now a separate question to attain that goal, right? If we fix the value of y, meaning y is no longer a variable, now y is a fixed value that we've chosen for y. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, y equals x squared on the curve, y equals x squared, right? So let's find the intersection points of the line y, or the horizontal line for that value of y, and the curve y equals x squared. Then what you want is the x or the x values, which would give you points on that horizontal line that intersect y equals x squared. Yeah. So you, what you want to do is solve for x for the equation y equals x squared. Now, when you solve that equation, you're finding all the x values that satisfy the equation where y is a fixed value is equal to x squared. And that's x equals plus or minus the square root of y. Those are the only two x values that would satisfy that equation for a fixed value of y. Okay, yeah. yeah. So now when you find that value of x, that's a value of x such that x comma y would be one of those two points that I drew. See those two dots I drew? Those are the two mm -hmm. dots that are both on the curve y equals x squared and the horizontal line for that fixed value of y. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then, uh, when you have those two points, uh, now look at the horizontal line. That if you look at the right point, then you can look at the points on the horizontal line going from that point to, what, to an x value of 1. So the x values would range from x equals positive square root of y to x equals 1. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then the other horizontal part would be x equals negative 1 to x equals negative square root of y. Okay, yeah. Make sense? So now you're going to integrate from negative 1 to negative the square root of y of f dx plus the integral from square root of y to 1 of f dx. And you calculate both those integrals, and then you add up the values, and you get the marginal probability density function of y. And keep in mind that c we found was 5, and that x and y is a constant because we're integrating okay. with respect to x. Got it. Okay, and there you go. Okay, so... Uh, it's now where time is up, and I, I have to go. Uh, hey, so, wait, pressure. Uh, pressure, don't put this question in the test. <laughs> 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 I can't tell you it's on the test, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, homework 11 is harder than the other homework. Yeah. Yeah. I typed up the solution, so I know that, you know. Uh, it took, it's annoying even just writing the answers, you know. Like, like, <laughs> so you know the answers right there, but you try to solve them to come out. <laughs> well, Thank you, you know, I, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Professor. Have a good night. You're welcome. Good night. I hope it will go in exam. What? So... I hope to go in exam. The exam is starting. Wait, wait, what? Sorry. So, I hope to go well in the exam. Exam two. Wait, so well you're you're getting doubled.
Wait, wait, you're getting double time, right? You're starting at the same time as everyone else in the Zoom meeting, and then you're, yeah. I'm going to send you the link for my next class, and then you're just going to join the link for the next class, and you're going to continue taking the exam while I'm in the other okay. class. Okay. But you yeah. did that for test one. Remember that? Yeah. So it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, good night. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good luck.